Let's look at the Maclaurin series expansions for the function sine of x and cos of x. Now these are covered in other videos. For sine of x, where x is in radians, it's very important that x is in radians, we have x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial, etc. So you can see here that the terms alternate. The powers are odd. So the first term has an odd power. It's x to the power of 1. We could write the first term as x to the power of 1 divided by 1 factorial. Then you see that the power is equal to the denominator. Um, 1 factorial is just 1. So the more terms we take of this series, the better our estimate will be for sine of x. So you know, if you want to use a series expansion for, say, sine of uh, pi over 3, x has to be in radians. You could plug pi over 3 in for x, and the more terms you take, the closer your answer will be to sine of pi over 3. Similarly, we have a Maclaurin series for cos of x. The first term is 1. Now, 1 can also be written as x to the power of naught divided by naught factorial where naught factorial is defined to equal 1. So we have x to the power of naught over naught factorial, that, that's just 1. But you can see that we have even powers of x, and our factorial terms increase by 2. Also the signs alternate, we have plus, minus, plus, minus, etc. We also have a series expansion for e to the power of x. Um, the first term can be written x to the power of naught divided by naught factorial. The second term can be written as x to the power of 1 divided by 1 factorial. So the pattern is fairly clear. So this is covered in, uh, in uh, videos in the differentiation section, along with Maclaurin series. Um, you see naught factorial is defined to be 1, so again this breaks down to just 1, as we want. Uh, the first term is x, well 1 factorial is just 1, so we have x divided by 1, which is x. So e to the power of x could also be written as the sum of x to the power of r divided by r factorial, where r ranges from 0 to infinity. A very famous relation in mathematics is known as Euler's formula, named after Leonard Euler, whose dates are 1707 to 1783. It states that e to the power of i times theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. So we can co connect these three functions. We can connect the exponential function to these trigonometric functions. And that connection involves the number i. You can see that the right-hand side here is the polar form of a complex number, whose modulus is 1, because all complex numbers have the form r into cos theta plus i sine theta, so r must be 1 in this case, and whose argument is theta. By converting complex numbers to Euler's form, so replacing cos theta plus i sine theta with e to the power of i theta, it's very easy to prove things like the Moss theorem and many trigonometric identities, much easier than what you saw in previous videos. So first of all, I want to prove this result before I use it. So what Euler basically did was let x equal i times theta in the series expansion for e to the power of x. So he just assumed that you could do this. You could plug i theta in for x. Now let's calculate some of these. i squared is minus 1. So that's the basic fact about i. What about i cubed? Well, we can write i cubed as i squared times i. We know that i squared is minus 1, so i cubed is minus 1 times i, which is minus i. So i cubed is minus i, so we get a minus i here. We have to cube the theta. What about i to the power of 4? Well, once we know i cubed, we can work that out. It's just i cubed times i. 
we know that i cubed is minus i, so it's minus i times i, which is minus i squared, which is minus minus 1, which is plus 1. So i to the power of 4 is plus 1. i to the power of 5 can be got from i to the power of 4 by multiplying i to the power of 4 by i. i to the power of 4 is 1. 1 times i is i. So i to the power of 5 is i. To get i to the power of 6, we just multiply i to the power of 5 by i. i to the power of 5 is i. i times i is minus 1. Uh, if we wanted to get i7, i to the power of 7, we'd multiply i by minus 1, which would give us uh, minus i times theta to the power of 7 over 7 factorial. So that's the next term. To get uh, the next term again, we'd multiply i by minus i. That's minus i squared. That's minus minus 1 is plus 1. So we get plus theta to the power of 8 over 8 factorial and so on. Now, if we look at this series here, we can break it up into real and imaginary parts. The real part involves terms that do not contain i, and the imaginary part will involve all the terms that i in them. I've underlined all the terms that do not involve i, and I've written down some of them here. So we have 1 minus theta squared over 2 factorial plus theta to the, four, to the 4 over 4 factorial minus theta to the 6 over 6 factorial plus theta to the power of 8 over 8 factorial, etc. And you can see there's a pattern here. And it looks exactly like the series, the Maclaurin series expansion for cos of x if we replace x with theta. And that is indeed what it is. So that's the real part of this infinite series. Now, let's look at the imaginary part. The imaginary part involves all the terms that contain i. So that's this term here, this term here, this term here, and this term here. So if we take i out of them, we, we have theta for this term. Here we'll have minus theta cubed over 3 factorial. Here we have theta to power of 5 over 5 factorial, then we have minus theta to the power of 7 over 7 factorial, etc. This series here is the Maclaurin series for sine of x, if we replace x with theta. So indeed, e to the power of i times theta can be written as cos of theta, which is this series here, plus i times the sine of theta, which is this series here. So theta, by the way, must be in radians. None of these series make sense if theta is in degrees. The, nothing is valid if theta is in degrees. Everything is valid if theta is in radians. So now that we've established Euler's formula, and we believe that it's true for any theta in radians, we can easily prove the Mavs theorem. The Mavs theorem states that cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n equals cos n theta plus i sine n theta, where n is any real or even complex number. So what we do is we write cos theta plus i sine theta as e to the power of i theta. And we want to raise it to the power of n. So we use Euler's form formula. We have two powers here, we just multiply them together, we get e to the power of i times n times theta. So we're assuming that the usual laws of algebra apply for complex numbers, that we can get rid of brackets by multiplying powers and so on. But now we can apply Euler's formula again, with theta equal, with this as our angle. So this must be cos of this angle here, which is n theta, plus i sine of n theta. So we're just using Euler's formula with theta replaced by n times theta. So that's the proof of the Mauss theorem. See how much shorter it is compared to the previous two videos. You can see that it's clearly true if n is a rational number. It's also true for real numbers n and even complex numbers n. Now I want to discuss multiplying and dividing complex numbers using these two examples. The complex number 2 plus 2i can be written as root 2 cos 45 degrees plus i sine 45 degrees. So here is the complex number 2 plus 2i. Its modulus is root 2, so r is equal to root 2. Theta, its argument, is 45 degrees. We could also use pi over 4 here. Finally, 
45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. This next example, I have the complex number minus 3 plus 3i. So here it is plotted on an argon diagram. Its modulus is 3 root 2. It's the distance of it to the origin. Just use Pythagoras' theorem to get that. That's root 3 squared plus root 3 squared, or root 18, which can be written as root 9 times 2, or 3 root 2. The angle it makes it a positive real axis, measured anti-clockwise, is 135 degrees. That angle is the same as 3 pi over 4 radians. Now we saw in a previous video for on multiplying complex numbers that when we multiply two complex numbers together, we multiply their moduli together. So we have root 2 multiplied by 3 root 2, which is 3 times 2, which is 6. And the argument of the product of these two complex numbers is got by summing these arguments here. If we sum these arguments, we have 45 plus 135, which is 80, 180. Cos of 180 is minus 1, so we have 6 times minus 1, which is minus 6. The sine of 180 is 0, so we have 6 times 0 is 0. So we get minus 6 for our answer. Now, let's use Euler's for let's express this product using Euler's for formula. Well, we see that 2 plus 2i is root 2 times this complex number here. So we can write it as root 2 times cos 45 plus i sine 45. But that's e to the power of i times 45 degrees. Now usually when we use Euler's formula, theta has to be given in radians. So it's i times pi over 4. So that's 2 plus 2i. What about minus 3 plus 3i? Well, its modulus is 3 root 2. And now we multiply by cos of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. That's where we can use Euler's formula. Replace theta with 3 pi over 4, so we get e to the power of i times 3 pi over 4. And it's quite easy to do this multiplication. We just multiply the moduli, root 2 by 3 root 2 gives us 6, as before. And when we're multiplying exponentials, we just add the powers. So we get e to the power of i times pi over 4 plus i times 3 pi over 4. That can be written as 6e to the power of um, i times pi pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is 4 pi over 4, which is pi. And then we can re-express our complex number in rectangular form by writing it as 6 times cos pi plus i sine pi. So that's using Euler's formula. And, well, we know what that is. Cos of 180 is minus, is minus 1, as we've seen already. So 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. The sine of 180 is 0. So Euler's formula shows us very clearly that when we multiply two complex numbers, we multiply the moduli and we add the arguments. That, that's something that I proved in an earlier video, but you can see it's much easier to uh, prove it here using Euler's formula. Now let's look at division. Now this is something I proved in an earlier video as well. When we divide two complex numbers, we divide the moduli so we have root 2 divided by 3 root 2. And we get a complex number whose argument is got by subtracting these arguments. So we take the argument of the complex number on top, which is 45 degrees or pi over 4, and subtract the argument of the complex number in the denominator, which is 3 pi over 4. pi over 4 minus 3 pi over 4 is minus 2 pi over 4. So we have 1 pi minus 3 pi over 4, which is minus 2 pi over 4, which can be broken down into minus pi over 2. Now, what is the cos of minus pi over 2? Well, we saw earlier that the cos of a negative angle is just the cos of that, you know, we can just drop the minus sign. So we have here is 1 third cos of pi over 2 plus i, well, it's not, it's not going to be plus actually, because the sine of minus a is minus sine a for any angle a. So the sine of minus pi over 2 is minus sine pi over 2. So we're going to get minus i sine pi over 2. 
Um, so that's one third times the cos of pi over two is zero. The sine of pi over two is one. So we get minus one third i. Now let's look at this using Euler's formula. Um, two plus two i can be written as root two e to the power of pi over four times i, or i times pi over four. And minus three plus three i can be written as three root two times e to the power of three pi over four times i. Okay, so we can rewrite cos theta plus i sine theta as e to the i theta. So we can re rewrite cos one three one cos three pi over four plus i sine three pi over four as e to the power of three pi over four i. But we have to multiply by three root two. Three root two is the modulus. These root twos cancel out, so we get one third. Now, see when we divide, what do we do? When we we subtract the powers. So we have e to the power of pi over four i divided by e to the power of 3 pi over 4i, that is e to the power of pi over 4i minus the power underneath. So that just comes from the basic laws of division. When our base numbers e are the same, we subtract the powers. So, so that's where the so that proves that we need to subtract the arguments. Just comes from basic law of division for dealing with powers. When we divide two terms that have the same base, the base is e, we subtract the powers. So you can see how much easier that is to, to, to show compared to the proof that I did earlier. Um, okay, we've, we, get, we get pi over four minus three pi over four is minus pi over two and we can now rewrite it in polar form or rectangular form as one third times the cos of minus pi over two plus i sine minus pi over two. And uh, that's what we had earlier, it's this here, and this all breaks down to minus one third i.